Big time fight at Bantamweight. We have the Matrix, Kyler Phillips, taking on China's Song Yadong. And we consider this possible fight tonight because for Kyler Phillips, he flows through fighting. I mean, he's calm, he's cool, he's got the hair. He kind of moves around, kind of sketchy, but not like the guy, Tim Elliott. But he'll switch stances. Very good at grappling, very good in the transitions. Kyler Phillips, a very complete martial artist, which might surprise a lot of people because you look at the five on in, and he's three and two. He's won his last three. He lost two in a row. He lost to, well, Canada's Brad Katona on The Ultimate Fighter about three years ago. But the guy's only 25 years old. He goes in the regional scene, loses a split decision to Victor Henry. Good fighter, but a bit of a surprise for a lot of people. He wins on LFA, and then he comes into the UFC and he fights Gabriel Silva, who's no longer in the UFC. He just got released. He was the younger brother of Eric Silva. Both prospects forever. So for Kyler Phillips in that fight, a very good one. It was a fight of the night performance in that one. And then his last time out, it was a performance of the night win over Cameron Elts. Now let me tell you this, man. Cameron Elts from the UK had a win over Patty Pimblett. He kind of bounced around between gyms, spent some time at Jackson Wing, spent some time at the BMF Ranch. Cameron Ellis was not good. And you could see it in that fight. He was really tentative. He was biting on everything. Kyler Phillips looked amazing in that fight. Song Yudong's taken on the much higher level of competition. You look at his five on in. Felipe Arantes, Vince Morales, Alejandro Perez, where you're not going to see a more disgusting knockout. Oh. I mean, listen, I implore you. Aaron Pico, John DeJesus, if you want to see a gross overhand right, but the right cross that Song Yudong has against Alejandro Perez. A real veteran of the division... Huge win for him there. Perez, if I'm not mistaken, was ranked in that one. He was. He had the close fight against Cody Stamen, and then his last time out, it was up at 45. He took on Marlon Vera, and he picked up a big decision win. It was a really close fight, and that's the thing. You have a really close fight against Marlon Vera nine months ago, and then we haven't seen Sung Yadon. Marlon Vera then went on to fight and picked up a big win and fought Sean O'Malley, and then he lost to Jose Aldo. That could have been... Song Yedong, and now we're here and we're fighting Kyler Phillips. How weird is that? Could have been you, Song, but you out here playing. No, it is weird. This is a super fun fight because we know out of his last two fights with Song Yedong, he ha he's a phenomenal striker. He really is. If he threw five strikes more per round, he would probably win unanimous decisions in both of those, and there wouldn't be all this controversy around the decisions. Well, he did his last time, but he did his last close fight. Exactly, and a lot of people did think Vera won it. Go back to the statement fight, though. Every moment that that fight was on the feet, Song Yadong was winning. He has great combos. He's a really good long-range striker, too. And the Perez fight is a great example of that. He doesn't have to be one of these boxers who's chest-to-chest -chest like a Carlos Felipe, if you will. He can fight at range and really set up his straight shots. And when he's on and when he is flowing, because that's what we talk about with Kyler Phillips, when he's in that flow state, he's hard to beat because he's so well-rounded, but he is so unorthodox that you're just always going to have a different look being thrown at you. Song Yadong, just very good at the basics. It's just, I really wish he had a slightly higher level of output because when he does let his hands go, he's so successful. And he's another fighter too. When he throws in combination, he will land every time. But when he tries to stick to his single shots and he's a little bit lazy with it, he's not able to land as much. We saw that even in the Vera fight. Vera would land five, six, seven punches, but the one or two that Yadong would hit him with, they just seem so much more impactful. And in this fight, I think it could be a very similar case where you have Kyler Phillips going out there, throwing a lot of kicks, throwing a lot of his unique techniques, and then Yadong just kind of cutting through a lot of that, throwing his straight shots. So at the end of this fight, I could see this being a very controversial decision either way, because I could see this, you look the stats afterwards and oh well Kyler Phillips he struck him 90 to 63 but when you actually look at it the 60 that Yudong landed are much more impactful I could see this being another controversial decision which is kind of wild it's a tricky one because again for Kyler Phillips flows this not let's say he's out of an orthodox stance he throws a lot of low kicks and leg kicks Song Yudong stands very tall and he has huge like we talked about it Amanda Lamos Lavinia Souza you look at Lamos's lower half it's huge Song Yudong has a huge lower half big base for all that that power to crack forward almost like a baseball player and for kyler phillips if he can oh, this is so terrible we'll, we'll we'll not say baseball bat we'll say like a field hockey stick if he just takes it and chops him just brings it out and starts chopping away at that lead leg he could cause problems for song Yudong and really take away the power and that's the thing how good can song Yudong be from the opposite stance will we see him from that stance in this fight because i know from kyler phillips offensively and more importantly defensively he's pretty good from both stances and that is going to be the unique thing about this fight because i do expect Yudong to have to switch stance at some point whether it's just a decision that he makes during the fight to give kyler a different look or just because his lead leg does get so beat up the issue with a lot of the kicks that phillips throws is he throws naked leg kicks and i know that's a joe rogan term sometimes but he will just stand and throw the kick without setting it up now 
Now, if he sets it up with his hands and then uses his kicks to end his combination, kind of like a Carlos Condit or even a Holly Holm, he's going to land, and he's going to land with a lot of force. When he does throw just those single shots and the single kicks, look for the counters of Sangi Dong coming straight down the middle. I'm going to bring up Poirier Gaethje. Gaethje lands so many leg kicks in that fight, but by the fourth round, Poirier gets his timing down to where he checks the kick, plants, and meets him with a straight shot right down the middle. And you see what that's able to do, especially when your opponent's moving into your power, you're going to be able to hurt them bad. And I do think Song Yudong is the more powerful out of these two. I think Kyler Phillips, yes, he can finish you, but a lot of his finishes do come from, I'm going to wrestle you, I'm going to make you tired, I'm going to volume you. There's just a lot more to deal with when you're fighting a guy like Phillips, whereas Yudong knows what he's good at. He gets it done with his bread and butter. It's his boxing. It's his combinations. It's his accuracy too. And that's what makes this fight really hard to predict. Because for Kyler Phillips, let's say he goes out there and has a very kick-heavy game plan. He shoots a few takedowns. It really makes Song Yudong guess. That's the best way to fight him. But if you go out there and just try to kickbox with Song Yudong, unless you are one of those upper echelon guys in the division, you're going to have a really tough outing against him. And that's what makes this fight so fun. It could be a quick flash knockout for Yudong. It could be the same thing for Phillips. Like, this fight could be so many different results, and that's what makes it so and fun. And two of the better gyms, and from Team Alpha Male, you know them for a lot of these guys in lower weight classes. For Kyler Phillips coming in here from MMA Lab, well, we already talked about it. He has two teammates on this card, Mario Bautista and Casey Kenny. In the same weight class, on the same card. So you know exactly what you're training for. With Casey Kenny's taking on Cruz. Volume takedowns, maybe. You look at the fight that Mario Bautista has against Trevin Jones. Well, he's probably going to need the takedowns. And he's probably going to need a little bit of volume, too. So for Kyler Phillips, I would expect volume and takedowns and the leg kicks. And if he can bring all of those together, there's a chance that Kyler Phillips gets a win here. I like Song Dong in this fight, though. A guy that's 23 years old. And if he keeps working on the takedown defense... At Team Alpha Male, where that's what they do, he should continue to have a lot of success in the UFC. So if we look at the topology votes, I was surprised because I just brought it up. 1,325 total votes, 80% for Song Yedong, 59% by decision, 33% by knockout. For the 20% that have Phillips, 72% have him to win by decision. If we look at the odds map, Phillips opened a plus 165 underdog. He's now at a plus 125. And if you look at Song Yedong, open a minus 190. He's now at a minus 151. So the money is coming in on Phillips. The fan vote is on Sung Yedong. Again, I have China's Sung Yedong in this fight. I, I really like those boxing combinations. I like the forward pressure. He has the win over Vera. He's faced a guy like Stamen. Like, it's just a matter of time before, you know, you get a big name. I'm honestly kind of surprised that it's Kyler Phillips here. And that's not a... That's not to throw shade at Phillips. I think Phillips is a good fighter. It's just I expected like a top 15 guy and not a guy that's fighting outside of the top 15 whose wins come over a guy that's not very good and a guy that's not in the UFC anymore. Okay, I agree with some of what you said, and I should say this. I agree with a lot of what you said. I do think Kyler Phillips is deserving of a top 15 guy because you look at the way that he can fight and his full potential, and I do think that's what this matchup is. And same thing, Sung Yudong, if you really want to put everything against him, he's on a two-fight losing streak. Now, I don't agree with that, but if you really want to be cynical looking at his record, he probably should have lost the Stamen fight, and the Vera fight was as close to a try as you can possibly have. Those guys fought a very even fight. I like Yudong in this fight, and I do think... It's going to be weird for Song Yudong because at Bantamweight, there's so many wrestle boxers. And if they just went out there to box with him, boy, would he have a lot of success. But then you look at the guys like Jimmy Rivera and the Cody Stamens who already holds a draw over Yudong, if you will. Those are the guys who are really going to give him issues. So I do expect him to win this fight, probably in impressive fashion, if we're being honest. And then he'll probably get another chance to fight a top 15 guy. I mean, listen, when Marlon Vera lost to Song Yudong and they raised his arm, Yudong went to kind of give him the fist bump. Marlon Vera went over and got, went uh, right into the microphone. Nah, f*** that. So we'll see what happens in this one. I'm not saying f*** that. I'm going Song Yudong in this fight. You're going Song Yudong as well. It should be a great fight on a great card. Three title fights up at the tops. So keep it locked in with Fighting Picks, Matt, as we always say. Let's get into it.